Each week uh, to this point, there's been uh, some very positive things that went on. Two things come to my mind is uh, our players are gaining a deeper understanding of our schemes and our processes. And uh, the other one is how many people in this building are pulling together to build this connected culture. And, uh, you know, it's Kevin, it's Wes Phillips, uh, Matt Daniels, and our veteran players. They're all pulling together. And the biggest factor that you can see from that is this team plays great under pressure. And we've been under pressure the last three weeks at the end of the games. And I just think that's a, a product of our schemes improving, our players learning and getting, gaining a deeper understanding, and that just how connected we are when it counts. And that's, that's a really big thing, and we want to continue that. Um, and we've got, a, we've got a tough task this week. You know, this is a very well-coached team. Uh, cutting edge run schemes. Uh, their coaches we're familiar with. D Darryl Bevel's down there. Uh, Frank Smith is an excellent line coach. And um, Mc McDaniel, he's, his, uh, uh, his uh, carrying card, is he's been great with his run schemes. And he creates a terrific challenge every week, the way he, he formates uh, the run game. Any questions? When you watch his run game, is that is a lot of it 49ers based? Yes, no question. You know, he was connected with Kyle so long, and he was a guy that led the charge. And uh, but he has a, a a very deep, you know, group of plays that that he can present you, and he'll he'll do it to whatever that fits his personnel and the opponent that week. Are you seeing any twists on that, or is it pretty consistent with what Kyle runs as well? Uh, you know, every time guys get off on their own, you know, um, you know, you, you see some subtle differences. But really, he was the guy behind t the run game and his base from from what he's done. Yeah, talk about the challenges of going against Tyreek Hill and how maybe is Miami using him differently, if at all, that, yeah. than Kansas City did because yeah. you went up against some regularly. Right, we saw him. You know, we we know what a terrific player he is, and you have to keep an eye on him all game. Uh, it takes a great swarm tackling to keep this guy in check for a whole game, and, and you got to build a roof over top of him, or you're not going to like the result. So um, they they're they're not using him exactly the same because uh, no two schemes are, are are the same, but they do know he runs fast, and they're going to use him that way. And it seems like uh, you've been able to use Delvin Thompson in a lot of different spots, and he's succeeded. Uh, well, I guess what are you seeing from his game? Uh, yeah, his yeah, we're just really happy with it. You know, everything we've asked him to do, and he compliments, you know, our, our fast rush team when he's in there. You know, he's pushing the pocket. He, you, you single block him, and it's not going to be a great thing for you. So all around, he's, he's been a, a very positive. You know, the, the important thing to, to know with our team, we're still learning about our team, but to be a successful defense in this league, you need a, a, a fourth quarter rush team. And we got guys that can close out games. And uh, uh, we've been in these tight games, and they've had big plays. They had a big sack that got the, the two-minute going. And then we have guys who will get after the ball, and, and to have a fourth-quarter strip was really important. But we have rushers. Uh, you know, you may not see it in sacks and so forth, but there's guys beating some, some people. But you need those guys. You can't manufacture that at the end of the game if you don't have it. With Waddle, what does that allow them to do? Having yeah. two of those guys at that yeah. speed. Any, anytime you have a, a terrific threat, and then you have another guy, just like our team, we have dual threats on both sides. It's harder. There's no question about it. If you give help to to one side, they know you're doing that. And uh, if you give help to both sides, there's there's challenges that go with that. So uh, very similar to what people have to uh, game plan against when they play our team. Do the uh, Niners similarities bleed over to the passing game in terms of just setting guys up after the catch just to create and, and set yeah. those guys up to run? Yeah, again, you know, a lot of these guys have West Coast backgrounds. Daryl did. He came out of that tree. Um, they're coming together as a staff, but but majority uh, of the philosophy in the passing game is similar. What do you see as the biggest value of moving Guys on the front, I mean, Zedarius on one side and then another, and Daniel, same way throughout a game. Yeah, you know, the key thing is we're going to be different every week. You know, we're going to look at matchups and we're going to uh, move the hard down around. You know, some guys will get the advantage down, and uh, we want we want to create the unexpected. You said earlier that you 
thought the team has a deeper understanding of your of the schemes and processes. Is there like one example yeah. of something that you've seen in your mind where yeah. from week one to five clearly progress has been made? Uh, that's a great question. Um, and and it's no, it's hard to, to 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 pinpoint that. But I think I said last week was it was a great month that that made us mature as a group and go through a lot of problem sets. And we had another one last week. You know, it was a team that you know had been rushing for 177. They said no, we're going to change the script, and their backs had 31 yards, at, but they were right in the game at the end. And we also went through a game where we got way up, and then it got even again. It got tough again. That's the only thing that's. The, the common thread at the end. But uh, it's just that as a coach, you, you feel more secure after you've experienced these things, uh, these different problem sets in year one, in year one. It's totally different in year two when you've been through it with your leaders and so forth. And I can't say enough when I talk about our process, about the veteran leadership on this football team. And uh, to know that your defense is connected by those guys and they control our work week. And, and everybody being on task. And then there's also an offense, defense, and special teams connection on this team, which is so, so big. And, and I believe it's why you win at the end, when you're, when you're totally connected as a team. And that's Kevin, that's Quazy, that's all the guys I mentioned. And, and there's a lot of selfless people uh, putting into our weeks of preparation. Coach, how do you prepare um, – <laughs> when they've gone ahead and said they're starting their third string quarterback, but there's just not a lot, obviously, on him yeah. um, to study. Yeah, the, the, the one thing we know all, all the way back from the Niners, they, they get the guy ready to play. They've done that. Kyle's done it. Mike's done it over the years. So their plan's not going to change a whole lot. And he's played a lot in preseason. He played a lot last week. And a lot of people look at the score last week and say, wow, you know, it must have been the change of quarterback. It must have been. No, it was 1917 in the fourth quarter. And then there was a turnover and a score on the other side that blew it open. But that was a lot closer game. And it's a credit to them to lose your backup quarterback on the first play and to be right there in the game in the fourth quarter. So um, we know that. <laughs> you know that that's the truth. What did you think of Brian Osamoa and, and the defensive snaps he, he had last week? Yeah, he was good. You know, we're looking for ways to uh, blend our, our new players and new talents and look for. Um, you know, Josh from the do last week he was you saw him in kind of a spy mode. You know, we want to use his athleticism and we'll look, you know, continue to look for ways to involve him. You mentioned uh, the team good under pressure from yeah. a defensive standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. I guess a two part question. Why is the defense doing such a good job, you know, of standing up when they have to? And then what do you got to do to make sure they don't have lulls during the game and, and they even get to that spot? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, I just think you, you have to keep gaining a, a clearer understanding and execution has got to be better. Our execution, you know, if it's better, we don't get in that spot. Um, that, that's one side of it. We want to constantly stay the course and improve. The other thing we, we have to understand, this is the landscape of the NFL the last month. They've all been close, you know, all the games. Uh, so there's a positive way of looking at that, that our team does know how to come together. We would like there to be more separation. That's what we're working on. And uh, just haven't quite got there yet. Guys, have a great day. Thank you. Okay.